Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with our uh, next presentation here to talk about redistricting software, a new generation of geospatial tools. We have Blake Esselstyn. Blake. All right. Hello, everybody. Is this on? Can you hear me now? Look at that. Um, and I'm waiting for uh, batteries for the clicker. So uh, I will be wandering around, but in the meantime, I can get started again. Thank you all for coming. Um, the, last, the last talk had a great title, and um, I was looking around for a title for mine, and let's see, without a clicker, I am Not sure. Oh, I'm, I'm, I see. I, OK. There we go. All right, well I was gonna say, one of the things I was gonna say is that we've got limited time here. Um, so I've got a little bit under 20 minutes and something like a dozen and a half tools that I wanna talk about, so this is gonna be fast paced. Uh, I will be speaking fast. Uh, also, I wanted to focus that my emphasis uh, here is on redistricting related to politics and elections. So if you were hoping to hear about districting for police beats or schools or things like that, I, I'm not gonna be focusing on that, although a lot of these tools can be used for that. Um, I mentioned before that the previous talk had a great title. I was trying to come up with a good title for this and was thinking that redistricting, the word redistricting has the letters NCGIS in it. And I, I, I tried to do an anagram, but um, the best one I could come up with isn't that great, so. Um, why am I qualified to be here talking with you all about this? Um, I have been working with GIS for 20 years, first learned about redistricting in 2002. Um, but really started getting into it in 2016. I, um, people may know me, I'm, I, I worked for the planning department in Nashville for years and then started Frontwater as a company focused on urban planning and land development. But in 2016, really started doing more uh, related to redistricting, started the districts blog at districts.com, and then just earlier this year created a new business entity called EQV Maps, where I'm doing the redistricting consulting and I also teach at Lenore Ryan. Uh, as far as relevance here, all these headlines uh, are from the past week. Some people may be aware that there's new legislation being proposed uh, in Raleigh that would affect the North Carolina State Constitution. There is a lawsuit, uh, a court decision last Friday that might affect the North Carolina State Constitution. And over the weekend, there um, was action taken in Virginia that may affect the Virginia Constitution. Um, also, folks may be aware that in the coming month, uh, North Carolina and Virginia and Maryland will all have redistricting plans being considered by the US Supreme Court. Uh, and there is redistricting that is almost certain to be happening in 2019. Folks may or may not be aware that Wake County has a, a few legislative districts that have to be redrawn because of a court decision. So lots going on, and even, even though the, the big stuff will really start happening in 2020 and 2021. Okay, we're gonna jump into tools that are used for actually creating plans. And I've, I've grouped them into four categories here. Um, and we'll just uh, keep moving. So these are pre predominantly tools that would be used by experts, consultants or other people who have done a lot of redistricting before. Uh, the most well-known one is Maptitude for Redistricting, also called M4R, and it's made by Caliper Corporation. Um, did anyone else, I, I actually used Maptitude back in the 90s, people familiar with Maptitude. So they, they Caliper Corporation created a full-blown GIS. Maptitude for redistricting is built on top of their GIS and it's one of their, their main products. They also do transportation modeling software. This has loads of features and as I said, it's, it's one of the favorites of the, the redistricting consultants and it, as a result, it gets a lot of um, attention in the press. Um, this is, the, the interface, and uh, you can see it looks a lot like ArcGIS desktop or something with some extra special uh, tables and, and buttons and things 
thrown in. A uh, little tidbit here is that um, this is an expensive piece of software, but there is a way to use it for free. If you go to Raleigh, to the legislative office building, there is a um, public workstation that people can, can use to, to check this out. The next tool is from a company called CityGate GIS, and it's called AutoBound. Um, it might make you think that it's automated, but actually, they, they chose that name years ago. This is actually the first PC-based redistricting tool, and they were thinking about doing automated redistricting. It's not actually the focus anymore, but they never bothered to change the name, so interesting tidbit about that. Um, this one is built on ArcGIS desktop, uh, although in the coming, the, the, their current product is, but for the next generation, they are planning to um, have a version that is built on ArcGIS Engine so that the, the user would not actually have to have an ArcGIS license. Um, the interface looks quite similar. This one has a neat thing where you actually can have a spreadsheet and manipulate uh, as you would in Excel if you want to, to do that, that kind of calculation that normally you wouldn't be able to do right in the GIS. This I debated whether to put in the expert category. This is very new. I just learned about it in January. And this is a plugin for QGIS um, from a company in Austin, Texas called Clarity and Rigor. And it's their redistrictor. Um, I have uh, had mixed results with installing it and using it myself, but they are uh, they seem intent on, on making it um, something that uh, an expert user could use. I mean, I wouldn't suggest this for a citizen because you have to be familiar with a program like QGIS and then and working through the, the plugin. Um, but uh, for people who want a free option, this um, the, the other two I mentioned are, are definitely costly and this would be a free option, but not one for the, the, uh, the new, new user. Um, and again, interface looks a lot like the other ones we've seen. So these are public-facing apps. These are ones that are designed for um, if there's a, a more public process and you want to have other people involved and, and make these available on the web. That does not mean these, these are, um, they're in different cost categories, but um, all of these are, the, instead of having the information stored on the person's PC typically or on, on a network, it's actually in the cloud. Um, and so uh, these would be ones that um, some entity would pay to, to set up an instance of. Caliper also offers, uh, in addition to Maptitude for redistricting, they have something called Maptitude Online Redistricting or more. And um, this is actually being used right now in Maryland. Uh, if you go to the Maryland governor's website, they're inviting citizens to submit plans um, for the congressional districts. And uh, this is from their website, but I, I went uh, and I created a login at the Maryland website, and um, this is what their, their interface looks like for that. It's actually very similar to what their desktop product looks like, um, but uh, available in this, this different format for, for a more group participation. Um, anyone heard of Esri? It's, a, it's also a GIS company. Um, their, their primary redistricting solution is one of these online ones. Um, I believe it was used in Utah in the last cycle. This one is based, uh, it's still based on Flex. The current instance is uh, based on Flex, which is Flash-based and is, is not, not many people are using anymore. But I believe in June is when the JavaScript-based version is supposed to be, be out and available. Um, and uh, this one, the, the, the interface does depart a little bit more from the, the, the sort of uh, typical desktop vernacular. Um, and this is one from their website, but I use this. I, this there is a free trial, um, and uh, you can access it through a web browser. And I, I did sort of some thought experiment districting plans for North Carolina's congressional districts. We can talk about those afterwards, but um, uh, this is an example of what that looked like. These are free options that are online, totally free. You all could do this uh, you know, after, after the social event tonight if you wanted. Anybody can, can go and set these up. These were either created by volunteers or academics or nonprofits that are getting funding to, to create free options online. Um, DRA stands for Dave's Redistricting App. And it sounds like something that you know some middle school 
person did as a school project, but Dave is a former Microsoft engineer, nice guy. He did a, a full version for the 2011 cycle, um, which got some um, a fair amount of use, and then it was actually used in North Carolina for a simulation of what an independent redistricting commission would look like. Uh, we used um, Dave's redistricting app for that. And uh, if folks will be talking about the 538 uh, Atlas of redistricting, they also use Dave's redistricting app. So it's pretty simple. Um, this was based on Silverlight. So unless you've got just the right configuration of Internet Explorer, you're, you're going to have a hard time using it now. Um, but simple, all, all kind of, all the, the tools were pretty much available in the interface, but uh, powerful and, and elegant. Um, they now have a beta, public beta, davesredistricting.org, um, and this is JavaScript based and has a lot of other neat features. One, one thing it has is the, um, the Cook Partisan Voting Index, the PVI, um, and they also are saying that it's going to allow for simultaneous collaborative editing, like Google Docs. Um, they, they, that was just some reports. Most of the, the pieces of software allow you to generate a report. Um, MGGG is a group, uh, stands for the Metric Geometry of Gerrymandering Group, and they are a bunch of um, PhD types from places like Harvard and MIT and Tufts, um, and they've been doing a lot with math and technology to um, allow different types of analysis, and I just found out about this pretty recently as well. They uh, have created an app called Districtor, which is, um, they haven't fully rolled it out, but I, I think if you, uh, I, I've, I've got a, a URL here, and if there's time, uh, I'd love to do like a one minute demo because it's pretty cool. They're, they're, I'm pretty sure using the Mapbox uh, vector tiles technology, and um, have done some neat things with their visuals like having the, these colored bars indicate whether you are at, below, or above the uh, ideal target population, um, and very fast, very responsive. And this would also, this is all open, will be open source in GitHub. Uh, this open source question mark, I'm just not sure how to classify it because they had a business model, I, I'll talk about this in a moment, but the, the business model that they used in 2011 for their previous product may not be what they use and in, in, they haven't announced what they're gonna be doing for 2021. But Azavia folks may be familiar with, um, they've, they've been to NCGIS in the past, they're based in Philadelphia. Um, they do a, a, a ton of different work, but they have been committed to redistricting, as I mentioned, for the last cycle. That was called District Builder 1, now District Builder 2. Um, they do not have any betas out, they've released a, a teaser on YouTube. Um, again, we're not sure, I, I don't know what the business model may be. I think if they could get the funding, they would like to just have it available for free, but otherwise what they've done is, is publish the code, and people who have the resources and the know-how could, um, you know, mount their own instance. Um, also cloud-based. And so the previous generation is what's being used now in Pennsylvania. There's a contest called Draw the Lines PA, and that, that contest is using District Builder, the, the older version. Um, and it looks something like that. And there's Pennsylvania. This, I'm gonna, they have, they put this video online. This is the, the um, one example of sort of what districting looks like for folks who, who haven't seen it or done it before. Um, and you can see what basically they're, they're selecting, uh, in this case, precincts, or uh, yes, I believe these, these uh, this honestly may be counties. You'll see it in a moment, they're gonna zoom in and it'll automatically change to a uh, different level of polygons that you can choose. And you can see that as the, um, the cursor is hovering over the districts. You can see what the population is, and if they drag a rectangle, as that rectangle is selecting, the, uh, the little tooltip by the cursor is being updated automatically. You can also see up here that um, as these changes are being made, the, uh, the district numbers get uh, instantly updated, and you can see not only what's being added, but the district that the numbers are being taken from. I like the color coding with the red and green to tell if you're uh, above or below while those things are happening. I'm also, I like that the, there are keyboard shortcuts. I've talked to the gentleman who's working on this and you'll notice that he's not having to click on things on the left-hand side as he's, as he's going from one function or one district to another. Um, there will be keyboard shortcuts to do that. 
Um, and again, this is modern zooming and quick response time that we're getting more and more accustomed to. I should emphasize this is just a prototype. There's no guarantee that the final product will look like this or, or uh, have this, this level of speed and responsiveness. Um, some people like the idea of having the computer do all the drawing of districts, so there are options out there that do automated redistricting. If you, wanna, if you like a, the idea of an algorithm doing it rather than people doing it, um, a company called Zillion Info in, uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, does a lot of work with big data, and um, they have a tool that lets you basically select which criteria, if you wanted to optimize for um, getting the population equality as tight as you can and compact districts, you can choose uh, two criteria like that, and then it generates a whole suite of plans, and you can see how those score on the two axes on your various criteria. Um, and then this, uh, this, most of these I have at least some familiarity with. Either I have uh, done a demo with someone from the company or used them myself. This one I, I should say I do not have much experience with. I'm looking forward to a conference in May where he'll be presenting. But uh, Kevin Boss put together Auto Redistrict. And um, again, you can, you can uh, specify these sliders uh, on which criteria are important to you and it generates a whole bunch of statistics. Um, and uh, something that he, he um, is, is confident is a better way, in his opinion, to, to do these. Uh, I do want to have a, a few footnotes on these. Esri does have a plugin for ArcGIS that's called redistricting. Um, it hasn't been updated in a long time. In my experience, you wouldn't want to use it for anything larger than maybe a, a county redistricting. Um, as I said, they, they haven't worked on it in a while, but it is still out there and it's free if you, if you have ArcGIS desktop. Um, I mentioned the QGIS one before. Also, I should just point out that these other tools that we're used to using are, are useful when you're, you're doing redistricting. I strongly recommend having something other than a laptop screen and a touchpad, big screen, nice mouse or trackball makes a big difference if you're, if you're manually drawing districts. Um, data, in North Carolina we're lucky that we have a lot of data in a central location. It tends to be pretty well maintained. Other states don't have that, so there are groups that are working on making data available. In addition to the usual suspects of government folks and, and you know, commercial vendors, um, uh, there are people at, at universities and these other nonprofits that are trying to collect the data and make it available digitally um, and in ways that conform to standards and, and are reliable. Um, there are some, some specific utilities, not for drawing plans, but for evaluating plans. Plan score is a neat one where you can upload a plan and it gives you metrics about whether it's got partisan bias. Um, and this was done, if folks have heard of the efficiency gap, this is actually created by some of the people who developed the efficiency gap metric. I mentioned the MGGG uh, folks in the Northeast, in Boston area before. They have a whole bunch more than I can talk about, but Python libraries and Markov chain, Monte Carlo simulation, all kinds of tools. Um, the Atlas of Redistricting at 538 is a great way to, to uh, interactively see if you go to a state and look at plans that were drawn based on various criteria and how that might affect the political outcomes. And lastly, education. I just want to point out that there are lots of scholars, including folks in North Carolina, who are working on this. Um, a lot of folks who are doing new analysis, much more attention being given to it in general than there was 10 years ago at this time. Um, journalists and quotes, because I include myself on that list because of my blog, but there are lots of journalists who are not just reporting, but creating um, great visualizations and other interactives online that are worth checking out. Uh, and so 2020 is around the corner, and it'll be interesting to see if having all these new tools mean that the, uh, the districts we see in 2021 uh, are, are kind of of a different nature than they were in 2011. And I think I'm at time. I'd be happy to, to take any questions. Let's say you're running for office. You want to find a tool that does the best auto imports to take state local election data, take away county data. A lot of these things would say I'm not doing the way and all that. What number of tools to figure out where you might want to Okay. 
Hmm. Okay. And I'm supposed to uh, uh, paraphrase and repeat the question. The question is whether any of these tools might be useful for someone running for office to be able to make sense of, of the data and consume the election-related data and be able to understand maybe where to, where to canvas or, or um, that sort of thing. Gosh, I mean, since these are built on QGIS or ArcGIS, Maptitude, if you've got a, a GIS package that you're more, whichever one you're comfortable with, um, I mean, to, honestly, if I were to be doing something like that, I would just go to my usual GIS software. They're, they're all pretty much specially designed for the process of redistricting, and I don't think they would give you much uh, in addition to what a, a standard GIS package would. Um, I mean, you, the user still sort of pulls in the data. It's, it's not, uh, it's, there's not sort of a, a magic wizard that, that does that part for you. Well, um, you know, Maptitude for redistricting ships with a lot of data. So I guess in that sense, maybe, but I, I the short answer is I, I don't have a great answer for you. Okay, so for folks who couldn't hear, um, there apparently is a tool called Vote Builder, which would be helpful for that. I, um, I try to be a nonpartisan actor in these things, so I, um, I'm, I'm not as familiar with campaign-related stuff. Yes, in the back. Um, Um, not that I'm aware of. I, as I mentioned, the folks uh, in the MGGG group are looking at all kinds of different ways to think about compactness. And another criterion that people think is important is what's called communities of interest. And how should we define communities of interest? And in North Carolina, for example, keeping counties whole and undivided um, is considered something important. But some people are questioning, is that really more important than, for example, what, what, uh, what people have access to, or if, if High Point is in multiple counties, should we be worried about keeping the counties whole rather than keeping the city of High Point whole? So there, there may be, I'm not aware of any software that, that includes that, but uh, the, the folks, particularly at the um, researchers at MGGG might be looking at that as a measure. Um, and for folks who, I'm sorry, I didn't repeat the question. He was wondering if things like walking distance or driving distance uh, are, are considered as a way of, of measuring um, quality of plans. I think we've still got time for, yeah? Was any of this taken into consideration? Not that I am aware of, except, uh, I'm sorry, the question was if this, any of these take into account polling sites. Um, one thing that people do pay attention to is whether precincts get split. And to the extent that a polling site on election day is for a single precinct, um, there, there, there's a, an, an effort to at least measure how many precincts are getting split. Um, but that's the only thing that I'm aware of. Um, but again, it's, it's um, something that, that could be considered. Did I see another hand? I want to give time for... Uh, Another great presentation from Buncombe County coming up, so thank you all for your attention.